Good morning, good morning. This is Jack Robert to send me J D Diamond, Jackie Bates, whatever y'all call me. Uh I'm going through a lot, guys. Um I just wanna to continue to thank y'all for listening to my podcast, going to my podcast on a daily basis to hear me, um, listening to my music, um, with uh social media freezing my pages, uh so Things won't move that fast and people won't see. So I'm thankful for that, that y'all are dedicated fans uh, of mine. Um, I just wanted to say that um, and I will be able to live through um, a lot of this process. Um, For the last three years, um, it's been a rough three years. Okay, um... I don't want to go too in depth with it, but of course, I always have a learning experience for you guys, and I want to break it down. Being in this industry, it's very, um, how I want to put it, very dangerous, you know. Um, however, I've been trained well because I've been in this industry for a very long time. You expect certain things to happen, but then you don't expect from certain people. You know, um, but that's why you have to watch and and not trust no one. Because it can be the person that's the closest or the person that's the furthest. At this time, I don't trust anyone. Okay, and that's because, of course, I go to work every day and I'm around a lot of people, okay? And um, I've been under attack. I've been under attack on my job. I've been under attack on certain people around me. So that tells me that I have to fall back, okay? Meaning don't deal, don't talk, don't sell, don't do anything um, other than go to work and come home, okay, until these people are caught, okay, sometimes people will put out scams, okay, and just to try to get to you, to try to get money, um, to try to get fame, they would do anything possible to get what they need to get, okay, Um, and this is pretty much why most of the music artists hide Okay, that's why they don't come out into the public. Uh, but once in a blue, uh, this is why um, they just don't deal with people. Okay, they act arrogant, you know, like get away from me, don't touch me, you know, um, stay away. That's not in my character. So I try not to do that to people. I'm, I'm a loving person. I've always been a loving person. Everyone loves me. You know, when I walk through, even at, at my job, when I walk through, you know, everyone, they, they, hey, Jackie, hey, even if they don't know my name, they, they give me a name. Hey, Bookie, hey, Boo, hey, um, Miss J, hey, Jackie. You know, that's what I get at any establishment that I'm in, you know what I mean, or organization that I'm working for because I'm a loving, kind person and I treat people kind and fair. However, in this industry, it's hard to do that because then you bring on the foes. Okay, and when you bring on the foes, you know, that's one thing Charlotte was afraid of me being so uh, loving and caring and, you know, open to people. Um, it, um, it puts me under a watch, you know, and somebody has to protect, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, and I get it, you know, it's a lot, but... I still got to eat. I still got to make money. You know, I don't have Section 8. I don't have no man covering me um, to pay bills. So it doesn't matter if you the biggest artist or the smallest artist. You still got to pay bills. The bill people are calling. Okay? It don't stop. However, um, this is why they protect me. You know, this is why... Um, cameras are everywhere. This is why I'm being watched all the time um, because of 
the people that are misleading and dishonest and um, how can I say it? They would just do anything to try to get in your circle, you know, and destroy, you know, if not destroy, hurt, you know, and I have one of those right now. Um, I do believe he has someone working at my job uh, to report back to him. So now we got to find out who that is. Um, And once we do that, um, I'm just waiting for them to catch them. Okay. Um, They already been watching. Um, They already suspected something was wrong. Um, you know, sometimes you got these higher ups that's, that's watching deeper than you thought, you know, they've been watching from the beginning, you know, and I tell you, I'm on high watch. I tell people I'm on high watch. So when you come into my life, you need to come, come right and come correct because, um, they're watching. Okay. Um, so at this point, um, I'm I'm pretty much going to stay off of social media um, I can't, I don't have no movement. As y'all see, if you go to any of my pages, there's no movement. They have frozen everything because of the act of this person. Okay. Um, so I can't even make any money if I wanted to, you know, unless I'm in the streets. So now I have to just pretty much fall back and just wait until they, um, handle the situation and let me know that the situation has been taken care of and then I can proceed. Uh, what what I'm doing and and trying to come up in this industry, um, it it is sad when people do this to your life, and, and they it, it's crazy because if they want to be in the industry, all they got to do is 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 do like I did, start from the bottom. You know, you don't have to uh, uh, put people through issues or their families through issues because. You want their fame. Build your own. You know. Um, but people have this tendency. They want to cheat their way into the industry. You know. And it's sad when, you know, you get these kind of people. You know. Um, I thank God that my protege is here. You know, he can help me. Matter of fact, he he just wrote me a new song. Um, I'm going to work on that while they're, they are... Um, trying to catch this, this person. Um, so that, that'll be coming soon, I guess. Um, I hope before the end, the year ends, cause I only dropped, what I dropped this year, I only dropped two songs this year. I mean, they still allow me to, um, stay in, um, without retiring me because I did drop some music this year. Um, as I know, if we don't drop music, they'll retire you the following year. Um, ASCAP will. Uh, that's just their, their um, because, you know, they have a team that looks for uh, sales of your music. And if you're not making music, why? You know, it makes sense. You know, why um, be focused on you to look for your monies and you're not even making songs? You know, um, I wanted to drop an album this year. But of course, that's not going to happen um, because I don't really have nobody helping me um, when it comes to um, my everyday life for me to even get these things done, you know, um, and then they're making it very, very hard for me. Um, and I don't know why I haven't done anything to anyone, but did what I was supposed to do. And that's follow lead with my um, team members in the industry, you know, Um and build my music label so I can do my own thing. You know, they constantly want to try to stop me from doing my own thing, you know. Um, and it's just not fair what they're doing. So they have to be stopped. You know, um, my family's name is on this. You know, um, I have major artists that's behind me on this. You know, um, and they're not only affecting me, they're affecting them as well. You know, and see, that's what people don't realize when you start interacting with um, and, and trying to hurt people, uh, businesses and their, their uh, what they're doing. And if they're attached to other people, you're affecting them as well. 
So now you wanna you have created um chaos not only with that person but with the third and fourth and fifth parties that's attached to them. You know? So that's what people need to think think about when you know they want to come in and try to disrupt things or um try to call shots and you know people you you have to have to be mindful of the things that you do because it can cost you your life you know um and that's why I always stay humble you know somebody has an opportunity that I want I just ask you know all they can tell me is no and then I can find another way you know but you don't mislead and 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 um um be dishonest to hurt others because you want to try to come up. It doesn't work that way. And that's what people need to understand. You know, I constantly tell people, you know, I've been in this industry for a very, very long time. Whether I've been on top or on the ground, it doesn't matter. I still have years um, experience in this industry and knowing a foe, okay, which we call like an op. Oh, that's y'all call it an opera today. We call it a foe. Um, and we know how to play our role until um, the truth come out. Because the truth will come out. You know, some it takes, it's real fast. And others, it could take years. You know, this particular uh, foe, it took like a, 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 well, it took over three years. Okay, but a year and a half of of him being in my presence, okay? So um, that's why it's hard for us to find love because you can't trust anyone. I had to tell my supervisor that the other day, you know, I told him, I said, you know, I'm so tired. You know, I'm set, I'm just beat down. You know, it's bringing tears to my eyes because he looked at me and he saw my pain. I said, you know, in, in this frame of work that I'm in, it's hard to find people you can trust. It's hard. Because people come for all different reasons. You know, that's why I told my daughter's father, I was like, you know, um, after his father passed away, you know, his father, Ben, had wanted us to get married. But he had some issues that he couldn't um, t- take care of. And he was finally able to take care of him. And I said, well, now we can get married, you know. Um, we had issues, but I trusted him. I knew who he was, you know. So there was no other choice for me. Like, okay, this is the only man. This is the man that you're going to die with because you can't trust nobody else at this point. You know, and that's what I was trying to explain to him. Like, why would you leave now? You know? So, you know, with that being said... um, of course, we broke up and I tried with someone else, but of course, he was dishonest. He was disloyal. He, was, he, was, he wasn't trustworthy. Um, he befriended me to get what he wanted. Of course, he didn't get what he wanted because I already knew. I already knew. You know, he thought I was stupid. I know I'm not stupid. I'm just waiting for you to fuck up so they can catch you. They've been watching. You're not paying attention. You're the one that's not uh, understanding what this thing is really about. But they're going to catch you. You know, and that's, you know, the, 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 the ball game to it. And people do it all the time. And they put themselves in these rims and then they say to themselves later on, like, well, how did this happen to me? Because you tried to befriend someone in the industry. It's not a game. You're playing with people's lives. If you want to sing, sing. If you want to dance, dance. Put your work in just like we did. You want power? You have to work to get it. But don't mislead people 
Because all that's going to do is get you either put in jail or, or killed. And that's just the bottom line. Ask for what you want. If you're godly and people know this, you ask and you shall receive. But don't mislead and distrust and give people distrust. That's how people get hurt in the industry. Because they want to be misleading. They want to be dishonest. And this is why we can't trust anyone. They say, oh, well, we never get to see the artists unless they out. We never get um doing an event. We never get to do it. And, and this is why. In order for you to level up in this industry, they have to put you through certain tests. And if you don't pass them tests, you don't make it. And it's simple as that. So once I knew... That this particular person didn't want to go through the testing process. I knew they wasn't going to make it. I knew at that point they are titled dangerous. So now no person in the industry is going to deal with this particular person. No one. Because now you're titled dangerous. Why would you do this to yourself? You have to follow the rules that they have put in place. I don't make the rules. Just like with me, when I decided to come back into the industry to help my son, um make music, even though I got into, but to make my son make music. I talked to 50 Cent, I talked to Jim Jones and Eminem online. I wrote 50, faxed him information. Not only did I do that, I had to go out to, um, His events, okay, was escorted by the police to the club that he was at, that he asked me to come to. Okay, in Jersey. He had sent me an um, a, um, invite. And, um... I told my son, I said, come on. I said, um, I want to take you to meet 50. He sent me an invite. And he said, okay. We got in the car. And this is when I was in Maryland. And I drove um, to Jersey. And I got there, I got lost. The police pulled me over. And I was like, damn, why are they pulling me over? You know? And um, she said, where are you going? And I opened up my Facebook, and I said, um, 50 Cent invited me to this club, and, you know, I showed it to her. And she said, okay. She looked at it, and she looked at my name. She took my license. She ran it. She said, okay, um, I'm going to escort you there. Do y'all see how serious this thing is? And... She escorted me to the club. Now, the person that I am, this particular club only had one way in. I had to walk upstairs. I don't do one way in, one way out clubs. I don't do, you know, I I just don't do clothes in places due to what happened to my friend um, in the Bronx at Diddy's show. Um... 
So I didn't go in. He didn't understand why, you know, but that was the reason. Um, he then turned around and um, re-invited me out to his book event, um, which I did go. Um, they asked me to sit by the cookbooks so that way they would know who I am. Um, I did everything they asked me to do because it wasn't harming me. They didn't say jump off a roof. They didn't say, um, I need you to, um, go sell drugs or, or, or take drugs to this part. They didn't say none of that. They just wanted me to sit by the cookbooks. It was nothing wrong with sitting by the cookbooks. His team needed to see who I was. It was as simple as that. So I sat by the cookbooks. Well, I got online first, shook his hand. And then went and sat sat by the cookbooks. Rode in the elevator with some of his um, his um, employees. They called me fat. I didn't care because I was drinking a Starbucks. They didn't know I had coconut milk in it. Just a little jokey joke. But it was simple. <laughs> I passed the test. But when you choose that you can't pass the test or don't want to pass the test, you don't get in because you're not trustworthy. I'm going to tell y'all about Omar. The veteran. He wanted in. My stomach, y'all, I'm hungry. I'm going to get up and eat, but I just wanted wanted to tell y'all about this podcast first. (laughs) Talk to y'all first. They didn't trust Omar. Because he had to pass the test. He passed the test. He was so afraid. He was so afraid, y'all. But he still passed the test. And his test was... To get me to Jersey to visit my mom, get me to Atlantic City, have a great time, and come back. That was his test. And he passed it. Not only did he pass it, he had fun. He was able to experience something new. He said, I've never been here before. He was like, oh my God, the hotels are so beautiful. That's all he had to do. I'm going to tell y'all his biggest test. I told him, I said, let's get, no, I said, let's go. um, No, I said, Isn't this where um, the other half of Carolyn's is? Because Carolyn's has uh, other uh, locations, but they're not called Carolyn's. They're called, um, oh, Jesus, I forget the name. He was like, you want to get off? Because you know we like Carolyn's. I said, well, it's raining. We don't really want to go in there because we all have uh, passes, so we can go to these particular places as well. So I was like, no. 
we could just go and and look at it. So we went to look at it. I said, well, we hungry and I need to use the bathroom too. So we get, I said, you want me to drive? And he was, he was like, at first he was like, no, you know, because when a person is going somewhere that, that's unknown, they want to have control. They want to be able to drive. And I get it. So, you know, that was his security. So I said, well, let me drive for a while because, you know, he got sick, you know, not to be telling his business, but he got sick. And um, I believe he got sick more out of fear than anything, you know, because not knowing his destination and not knowing where he was going. And he was with these people, even though he knew me, but he didn't know me. You get what I'm saying? So he's going out of town with these people he know nothing about for real. So I put the GPS on, and when I put the GPS on, it, it took me directly to the Marine base. See, I'm already in the database because I used to work on the base. So I'm already in there, you know. However... He had proclaimed to be a veteran. They needed to know that it was true. And when he looked up and saw the Marine, he smiled like, okay, safety. (laughs) And he was like, well, I need your ID. And he looked at it and, you know, both IDs or whatever the case may be. And he was like, okay. You know, the Marine shook his head and we went in. We knew that he he was truly a veteran. You know, because you don't just walk around saying, oh, let me see your veteran card or let me see your ID, you know. But we knew from that point that the that there was no lies with that. After that, everything went smooth sailing. Okay. When we got to the hotel, the first hotel in Maryland, he was afraid. You know, um, because it was dark. He's in an unknown place. It's normal. Fear is normal. And he was talking to his father, you know, and I guess his father was asking, well, who's these people are you with? Who's these people? <laughs> And when he hung up the phone, no, I told him to tell his father, hello, you know. And when he hung up the phone, I looked at him and I said, I would never let nobody do anything to you. You are safe right now. They just wanted to make sure that you are who you say you are. And from that that night, we had a ball. From that night on. He said, well, where am I? I said, you are in um, Cecil County, Maryland. This Cecil County and Hartford County is nothing but veterans. So you're safe. It's your people. That's where I brought you to, your people. And he just looked at me like, huh? Yeah, we needed to know that who you say you are, you are, if you want to get into this industry. We visited my mother's grave site. I let him meet my son. And we took it on into Atlantic City. And he had a ball. And so did I. After that, life was great. He was able to pull up videos, do whatever he wanted to do. They um, gave him attachment to me on Google. But he was afraid. But he overcame his fears. Because nobody asked him to do anything. He, he, he thought. He used his brains. He said, well, she's not asking me to do anything that can harm me. He 
She ha- she's asking me to do a simple task. And this opportunity may not come again. So I'm going to do this simple task. Because it's not going to hurt me. In other words, follow the instructions. People, when you come into this industry, you're not being asked to do anything. You know, people. I'm, I'm going to just say this. People make it, and this is people that's not in the industry. People make it so difficult for those that really want to be in the industry Because they do so much lying and mixing up stories and trying to hurt others in order to make it. They just make up so many, um, as I was talking to a girl yesterday. Conspiracies. It makes it difficult. The reason why I wasn't afraid. When my time. For me to. Come into the music side of things. The reason why I wasn't afraid. And I'm going to tell y'all why. Because there were things that in order for people to get to me when I was in Buffalo, New York, they had to pass the test. And I didn't create it. This was just for my safety. I used to hang in a bar on Main Street in Buffalo. And if a person was looking for me, They had to go through other people before they can get to me. And you had to be watched in the city for at least two days. Before you could even get to me. So when 50 put out that this is what he needed me to do in order for me to get what I need to get in order to get in this industry and get my son going... I already knew. I already knew what what, what I had to do. Because I knew what people had to do to get to me. So it didn't bother me. But I can see a newcomer, a rookie, um, being afraid because they don't know. You can't just get in this industry. It doesn't work that way. And they noticed that, like, here in North Carolina, everybody that touched base with me, you know, they find out the information and they try to, you know, they want to, talk about similar things on the radio, you know, or they would do certain things on Instagram. But that's not how we do things. You are not fully in the industry unless you are on Google. And if they put you on Google, that that means you've been verified either in the past Or they verified you during the duration of you being with that person. And from that point, they watch. You don't need a blue check on your Instagram and Facebook to be verified. A verified artist or a verified celebrity. Because you got to remember, social media wasn't there before. You got people that's turned up with 
seventy, a hundred thousand, a million um uh followers, but they're not verified on Google. And meaning meaning verified meaning public information. You can have two people, two followers on social media. But if you're a celebrity, you will be public on Google. Just like businesses. It's a public entity. You can find it on Google. Google, Google, Yahoo, Bing, whatever. But Google's the number one resource, research source. Go to when you want to find out public information. Some public information is put up there if that public person decides to give it to them. But if they don't, it won't. It won't go up there, even if they know the information. Because some information is just too uh, personal. But they're not going to just throw people up there unless they've been in something prior. Or... Um, they pass the test. And that's just the bottom line. If you don't pass the test, then you become on the list of a dangerous person to deal with. Because that means you had a, 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 a motive. So now they have to watch you. You become high watch. And that's just the way it is. So until um, this particular person is caught and they find out who's working with them and why they did what they did, I pretty much got to lay low. And that's just the bottom line. Um, I hate that this is the life that I have to live. You know, all of us in the industry hate it. You know, but this is why we try to find somebody, be with that one person, and only that one person and live out your life because it can become dangerous. Um, I had to play my part, you know, um, play the part of the fool, you know, and it, that's, it's, it's, it's crazy when you, you have to play a part, you know, um, in order to see if a person is true or if they are foe. You know, um, you don't want to be misleading as well, you know, but this is just the way it goes until they can verify that person, you know, um, it's nothing to play with people. People lose their lives. You know, they was they was joking on the radio, calling me Selena, you know. Um, but it's not a joke. It's not a joke. People do actually seek out um, entertainment artists and and try to hurt, try to hurt them. You know, so you become, you know, high watch. You know, um, in order to be saved, you know, and that's just what it is. 
Rücken haben. It's sad uh, that people are so crazy in this world and they do crazy things and why we don't know, you know, but we got to be protected when we are a public entity, you know, um, and that's just what it is. It's a lonely, it's a lonely road, very, very lonely road. So I just wanted to throw that out there to you guys, you know, anybody that's thinking about coming into this industry, you know, um, and once you get to a certain level, um, this is just what it is, you know, um, I may not find a mate for another three years, you know, to someone that I can really trust, someone that can, you know, pass the test. You know, and that's why I was so angry with this foe because, you know, Omar, he passed the test and you interfering in that. Like, who do you think you are? Like, no, it doesn't work that way because it's too hard for us to find mates. And when we find them, we want to keep them. It may take another two, three years before I can find somebody that I can trust. That I could even ride out with. Have fun with. This is why y'all don't see me out. Y'all don't see me in the clubs. Because there's no. nobody. I don't have nobody that I can trust. And this is just what it is. Until my family. We come together. And be able to go out together. They, they always say, well, why, why do you always with the kids the Carolines? Because they're the only ones I trust. I can't hang with nobody else. Because I don't trust nobody else. Now, I do have one friend here. In Charlotte, I do trust. Um, we used to go out, but our work schedules are different, so um, I, I really can't, you know, hang out with her much. But um, outside of that, there's nobody else. Because I know how this thing goes. I've been in this thing... So it's very young. Very, very young. You know, so... It's just... <laughs> it's just crazy. You know, and I'm just going to give it to y'all straight. It's just... This is just the way it is. I tell people, don't be jealous of another person's fame because you don't know what they go through. You don't know their everyday life. They want to be jealous of things that you have. They want to be jealous of the money you have. If you get a little bit of extra money, they want to be jealous. Do you know what I had to go through to get this? Do you know how lonely I am because I can't trust anyone? Just stay out my way. Leave me alone. You see me at work? I speak to almost everybody. And everybody speak to me. But for the most part, I'm by myself. Because I don't know who's who. So 
the moment that I walked in that building, everyone was a foe until I, until I get to know you. Because that's how it is. I had to live my life like this since I was 12. And that's just what it is. We have to be protected. So, you know, with that being said, you know, you have to think twice before you decide to want to be one of us. It's not an easy road. You know, they, they made me get a gun to protect myself. You know, and it's, 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 it's sad how, how these people make it so difficult. So, I say all that to say, think twice, you know. See, and I didn't make myself a public figure. That's the problem. You know, I didn't ask for this. I didn't say, um, hey, I want to be an entertainer. I was made a public figure from a child without... And see, that's the problem with the media. You know, the media is wrong for doing that. You know, um, granted, it, 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 I was able to use it for my advantage um, because my son wanted to go in the industry, but for the most part, I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask to be in the public, the public eye, but because I was born in it, because I was born in it, and when my little brother died, I had to be presented. <laughs> you know, um, and it's, it's sad, you know, that Children that don't even want to be bothered. I just always wanted to live a regular life. I ran from the industry for years. The music industry, I ran from them for years. I did not want to be a part of this industry. I did not want to be on the front line. But they did everything in their power to put me on the front line. Until I submitted and sacrificed and said, okay, if this is what my son wants to do, I'm willing to, to help him do this. But this is not something I wanted to do. I love helping the community. That's what I love. That's my dream. Not being a music artist. The Jews felt I had the talent to um, present me so I can make the money to pay for college. But it wasn't something I wanted to do. You know how they say, use what you got to get what you want? I wanted money. So I could pay for school. So they decided to present me to the city so I can get the money to pay for school. I didn't ask for this. This wasn't my dream. But I had to live a lonely life for many years because of the way people think and the things that they do. I had to be hidden. I was hidden in the state of Maryland for 12 years. People thought I died. 
I was sent off to Maryland from Buffalo because people, because of foes. And I had to live a quiet life in Maryland, which, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love it there. And they put me in the perfect place. I was able to make money. It was beautiful. The people were nice. Life was good. But I decided to come back out to help my child. And, I mean, I love my son, but it's the worst thing we could have done. Because here I go again. Lonely. Can't trust anybody. Got to sit low until they catch people. You know, to see what their alternative motives were. Once again. How is this going to affect the rest of the people that I'm attached to? They never thought about that. How would this affect the rest of the people that I'm attached to? How many people that they're about to destroy because I'm attached to them? So they will be caught. It's just who and when and how. Because I'm attached to so many people. This is big business. And that's just how it is, people. So once again, think twice before you um you're trying to come in this industry. But shout out to Omar now. You um if you're listening, you're free to do what you want to do in this industry. Whatever you want to build yourself to be. That actor that you wanted to be, you need to get it bopping. Because you passed the test. Um, That's pretty much, I just wanted to tell y'all that. So I'm just going to fall back uh, right now and just focus. I have to, I have to keep my mind clear, free. I got to watch, pay attention to all my surroundings, you know. Um, how do we know that we were dealing with a foe? Um, this, this is just what it is. I know the process. And it's a long process, you know, um... So y'all just make sure that if you want in this industry and this is something that you want to do, that you're ready for this this portion of it. And remember, don't hate on others because you don't know what they're going through. I, I literally went into work the other day with tears in my eyes. Because I knew that he was a foe. I knew. And I knew that. I'm tired. I'm just tired. You know, I was tired. I was drained. Like. And I told my supervisor, you know, and and it's sad when a person looks at you. 
you know, with sincerity. And, and I told him, I said, I'm, I'm tired. And he just looked at me like, like, you know, like, you tired because of work? Like, it's, it's the whole thing. It's everything. You know, I'm tired. Like, I, I, I got to keep watching everybody. I got to, I can't trust nobody. You know, um, pretty much I don't even have a life. I have to watch everything I do. I have to watch what I say, you know. If I say the wrong thing, it, it, that could become public, you know. If 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 I if I look the wrong way, that could become public. You know, and it, it's a lonely road. I can't even really meet people like that. I, I, I meet somebody and, and I have to study them in order for me to even be around them. And I have to study them for, for like a, a year, at least eight months to a year. Like, even with Omar. I met Omar back in October of 21. All right, let me see. Well, Omar, he, he actually did it fast. Um, I met him back October, no, September 21. I invited him with another... Um, I'm a music artist. Um, <coughs> I invited him with another music artist. Um, that I trust. Um, I brought him to both of them to you know my area, and I knew that this other one was a veteran for real. I knew that he was a veteran. Um, so I had pretty pretty much I had him not how can I explain it? I try to check him out a little bit to see like if the stories that he was telling was true, you know, um and it all matched up, you know, some of the things or whatever. <coughs> I still got this cold a little bit, y'all. It's breaking though. The heat really messes me up bad. But um he he um did his part to see <coughs> <coughs> if he was trusted enough for me to deal with him, you know. And like as just as a friend, not in a relationship, just as a friend. You know, somebody to just have to hang out with. And when he he told me, he was like, yeah, I think he all right, you know. So I was like, okay. So I um, invited him out to Caramel's with me, which he showed. <coughs> and we, you know, we chopped it up and chilled, you know. And he drove with me. So at that point, he trusted me, you know. Um, he drove with me. And, you know, we talked about, you know, our lives. He told me about his life in the military, different things like that. You know, I was like, okay. And um, we would call each other back and forth and, and kick it, you know. And being that he was from a place that I was known in, you know, um, he knew certain things about me, you know, already. Um which made it good because then he knew some of my characteristics, the things I liked and disliked. Um, and we just kept in touch. You know, we kept in touch. <coughs> and by us keeping in touch, 
made the relationship grow fonder. You know, we we bonded a little bit, you know, so that's why it was easy for me to say, hey, look, I want to take a trip and I want you to take it with me. Um, um, and that's what helped him get his spot on Google <laughs> and become a public figure so now he can do uh, the things that he needs to do. See, they, see, this is the thing. The reason why you have to become a public figure is because you get no power if you're not a public figure. Meaning, by you being a public figure, they know you have a lot to lose. They know it's certain things you can't lie about because you're a public figure. So you get things that other people wouldn't get. We get everything first. If you ever, like listen to Jay Z, like he'll say, he said in one of his songs, um, I forget what song it is, but he says in one of his songs, you. No, he said, y'all buying stuff that I had two years ago. Not because he had the money, because it was presented to him first, because he was he's a public figure. So we get things before the the people get get it. We're like the tryout. And if it's a go, then y'all get it. And that's the way it works. We have a job to do. So, I say that to say, um, this is why they need to know if you're a public figure. If you want to be a public figure, but it can become a lonely world. Especially when you get into the music side of things. (coughs) And that's just what it is. Um, but it can be very dangerous, you know, and the only reason why I went in, uh, to help my son, because my relation, my relationship was secure, you know, I was in this relationship for 16 years, so my relationship was secure, and I was like, okay, you know, I I could do this because I have a, a mate, and... I've never dated quite as kept. I have not dated outside of the the industry. This is my first time. Um, everyone that I've dated uh been attached to the industry. Okay. Um dealing with this foe, and that's why I messed up, you know, dealing with this foe. Um I mean he has some attachments, but not not the attachments that I'm used to. I had no business even dealing with them. And that's just, you know, I thought, you know, sometimes, you know, things can be so precious. You think God sent them in, you know, and I believe in God highly. So I'm like, okay, God sent this person, you know, and I'm going to try something new, you know, because I've never, ever dealt with anyone outside of the industry. (laughs) I've never dated a rapper, but anybody that was... um, that I dealt with was attached to either the music industry or um, was an athlete. So that's just my life, you know. Um, This person was outside of that. So um, I said, well, I'm going to try something new and I'm going to see if this works. But the whole time he was a foe. He's he's not a public figure, so I shouldn't have been dealing with him, period. You know, um, and he wasn't known, um, wasn't well known enough for me to deal with him. You know, um, so that's my fault uh, for trying to 
bring somebody in that wasn't already verified publicly, you know, um, so I do apologize to all the people that's attached to me on, on behalf of that, because, um, he was more so a friend of the family, you know, and I try to stay within my family, um, peoples and deal with them, but. I, I knew that I I was wrong, you know. Um, so now I, I got to deal with this and, and just wait it out for right now. Um, and that's just the world of living a public life, you know. Um, but that's pretty much all I want to talk to y'all. Oh, no, I did want to talk to y'all about uh, pathological liars. I, I want to talk to y'all about that. Because um, there's a lot of them out here, y'all. And y'all got to watch um, when people come to you with these these lies. And, you know, that's why I just trust so many people. I just can't trust people because they, who are we? will tell you all kind of things and make you believe all kind of things and or try to make you believe. And you just got to just be mindful. You know, if things don't add up, you know something is not right. And that's what you have to watch for, you know. I had a few pathological liars in, in, in my life, you know. Some were good friends, and some, you know, was just foes, and I'll just look at them, like, and shake my head, you know, um, people would try to do, um, or say anything for attention, some people, you know, um, and that's just what it is, you know, so you got to watch out for these type of people as well, you know, um, it's just crazy how people do, you know, and even companies, you got companies that, that do it too, like, I'm going to use this instance. I had applied for a grant, right? So I had this payroll company call me up and ask me if I needed payroll. And I'm like, well, I'm the only one that's working right now. So no, I really don't need payroll. However, I applied for a grant and I'm waiting um, for an answer at the end of the month. And... It said, okay, so we'll call you back at the, in the beginning of next month. And I said, okay. So the lady calls me yesterday. And she says, hi, um, I was so told to call you on the beginning of December, you know, around the payroll. So I had to literally break down that I applied for a grant and these people push the time back so they didn't think that I was lying to them and just pulling pulling them along. And, and we have to do these type of things because you don't want to tell all your business, but sometimes you got to because people will make you look bad. Companies will make you look bad. You know, and that's just what it is. Just like what I went through on Amazon. They approved me, asked for me to do certain things, then stop my account, then want to present my account everywhere once they see me on SD. I had to tell y'all because they're not going to make me look crazy because y'all want to lie about what y'all do or how y'all do things. So I, that's why I keep it real. I tell us the truth. 
I don't care if it make you look ugly or not. It's you you hurting me. <laughs> Anytime I feel like you're gonna hurt me, I'm going I'm gonna tell the truth. That's one thing about me. You know, you ain't gonna make my business look bad and make the people that I'm attached to look bad because of what you doing. No, we're gonna tell the truth about you. And that's how it has to be done in this industry. To protect what you're building, to protect your brand. So they forget that we're building a brand and we are the brand. The human being is the brand. So when you are hurting that brand and hurting the people that's attached to that brand, we have to tell people the truth. Because it could affect the money that we get. It could affect the people that deal with us. It could affect our monies. It's like you hear uh, the baby. You use him for instance. He got a song on the radio right now. And he said, yeah, I missed 20 million because of whatever. I forgot what he was saying about telling the truth or whatever the case may be. Well, it don't matter. We have to tell the truth because people will destroy your brand. With their nonsense. Businesses, people, it doesn't matter. Look look how about Kanye. Look at him. Just because he said something, he lost all his contracts, and they decided to try to destroy his brand. But it also destroys their brand as well, because now we see how y'all get down. So certain people won't, like, okay, I'm going to use Beyonce, for instance. Certain companies she would never work with because she see how they work with other people. If you're doing that to that person, what are you going to do to me? I can't afford to be hurt because, or get something negative in the media because y'all want to do negative things and attach me to it. People, you got to think. They're all watching. Even if your social media is not moving, people can always Google your name and see what's going on with you. (laughs) Even if they're not talking about you on the radio, they can still Google your name and go down the list and keep going and scrolling and scrolling. Hit the Facebook. Okay, let me hit hashtag Miss JJ Diamond and see what's going on with her. Oh, damn, she's doing this. Okay, all right. Oh, damn, what happened here? This is what this company is doing to Oh, no, I ain't dealing with them. That's how it works. We protect each other. Oh, this company is working with this company? And we know that this company is a bad company. Oh, so we're not going to, we're not investing in nothing with this company. That's the way it works. I had to explain that to someone at work yesterday. That's why you need to know the business before you get in it. Don't just follow people because you see somebody over here doing something. Know the business. Get the inside so you'll know how it runs. Because you'll make yourself look bad chasing other companies. That's no good for real. And that's just the way it is. You got good companies out here. And you got bad companies out here. And we watch them all. We pay attention. So I say that to say, y'all be careful out there. (laughs) If y'all don't know what y'all doing, it could lead y'all into a bad rim. A very, very bad rim. That's all I say. 
You know, they sit back and they watch me and they try to figure me out. And they're like, okay, but is she doing this negatively and doing that? No, y'all think it's negatively. But because y'all don't know the insides on on certain things, that's why y'all think it's negative. Because y'all don't know a lot of stuff because we don't tell it. You don't get that information until you're in. We only tell you a certain part. But if you miss one thing, you can't complete the task. So you're not going to win. That's how it's done. We'll let you know certain things. But not everything. We don't give you the information unless you're one of us. In order to be one of us, you have to be a public figure. And that's just the way it is. So I say all that to say, and say you do. do, do let me tell, let me go. Let me say this too. Being a f- public figure means that your life is public. You walk amongst the others, but your life is public. That's what it means. The jobs that you work, the positions that you take on. Business side of things, it's public. We file our taxes. We make sure everything is going to up and up because your life is public. It's easy to get information on you. Because your life is public. That's what it means. It's simple. That's why we don't do dirt. We don't, uh, like we tell these these rappers, stop selling drugs, get a job. Because your life is public. And you'll be the first to go to jail. Because your life is public. Make it make sense. You once told the world you wanted to be a public entity. And then you go out and sell drugs and then wonder why you're going to jail. Your life is public. Everything has to be done on the front line. Everything has to be done the correct way. Because it's easy for you to get caught because your life is public. Make it make sense. Think. You know, y'all see all the guys... That put their fingers to their head. They're telling you to think. Think. Pay attention. You can't do negative things if your life is public. Shit, sometimes I'll be afraid to take a shit at work. Sorry for cursing. I'm sorry. Poop. And make sure I flush it because I don't want nobody to go in there and and take a piece of my poop. Because my life is public. I don't know who and who who know what and why. And they may take a piece of my poop and take it to the damn media. Who knows? Well, I got a piece of her poop. Blow it up. Put it on the media. Uh, Miss JJ Diamond took a, a poop at work and it was smelling bad. These are the things that they do <laughs> because your life is public. But we still have to live. And when it gets crazy like this, this is why most people move over to um, L.A. Because the majority of the people that live over there, life is public. And New York. So we don't have to worry about it. L.A. is a little bit more intensifying than 
um, New York, you know, they, they, they're more, most of the people there are public. So they, you know, it's just, it's regular to them. So when you start talking, people start saying, yeah, I'm about to move to L.A., you know, and they're in the industry, that's why. They're getting tired. Because they want to be with people like them. Be able to walk around, you know, with people like them. And that's just what it is. Oh, I just want to throw these things out there to y'all. You know, um, y'all know I always do a podcast. I do about my about my life most of the time. And it's not about my life, about things that I experience, you know. Um, and I try to give it to you guys so y'all can prepare. You know, I'm starting to talk to a lot more of, of the gen- generation and seeing their wants and needs, you know, what they... They're um, looking for um, for the upcoming uh, years to come as they grow. Um, they are looking at the voting part of life. You know, they are looking at school. Uh, a lot of them don't want to be mothers or fathers because um, they see the struggle. Um they want to beat a lot of the negative things like teen pregnancy, drugs, uh, anxiety. They want to beat all these things that um, people have put on them and labeled them as. They're fighting towards that. And I'm glad to see that. Um, my daughter's a part of, I think it's the gen- generation that I'm talking about. Is a part of the gen generation um, as well. She ends it, actually. Um, so she's in that realm. Um, uh, they want to try to beat everything. And I see them to be um, a great... This generation, uh, the, the generation that my daughter's in, I see that generation to be a very good generation coming forth Um for um, the next decade, you know, the way they handle things. Um, they're not money struck. Uh, they think about what they want to spend their money on more. You know, they contemplate on it. Um, they they keep it simple. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm liking this generation coming up. I believe it's the gen generation, y'all. Let me look it up real quick. I'm sorry. I do apologize. It's the Y generation. Wait, wait, no. The Z. I'm sorry, it's the Z generation. And the generation after that, from 2010 to 2024, is the Alpha. Okay, so it's the Gen generation. I like this, um, this Gen generation. Um, and I believe the reason why the alphas is coming up is because they're going to perfect it and transform it, transform it over to the, the, the little ones. Okay. And 
the alphas is going to really perfect it. They are going to really make um, a new beginning for us. That's why they call them the alpha generation, meaning they're going to be the ones that's going to be eating from the earth. They're going to be doing things more godly. Um, and that's going to be within the next um, two years. So it's sooner than I think. So this this world's gonna change dramatically. You know, um, I had someone tell me today. You know, I, I showed them my um my bath salts and stuff. Um, you know, he looked it up online and he was like, "Oh my God, this is fire!" And I was like, "Like, I I, I wanted to say what you mean, but I already knew what he what he meant." And he was like, "Oh my God!" She was like. You need to hurry up and get in the malls. And I'm like, I know, I, I know, but I'm going through so much with these foes and these people. It's like unreal. He was like, it's needed. And I'm like, I know, because the alpha generation is going to be the ones that's going to be the purest. And this is what we're creating because we want to see cancer and we want to see all these diseases go away. So the. Y generation, is it the Y? Let me just double check back because I keep getting it mixed up. The ones that's born from 1995 to 2009. So my son is a part of the same generation as my daughter. Okay, and now I, I, I can get why. He's the way he is and she he starts it and she ends it. But they do have similar um, thoughts on on certain things. And I respect it. I respect them highly. Um, This generation is going to be, they're going to be winners. Just like the the generation, my generation, my generation, we had a lot of winners. Um... They say because we were cold and we, you know, they say we we're crazy, but no, that's not the case. <laughs> but um, we, a lot of us won, you know, and still winning. Um, but this next generation, they're going to be serious winners. And I mean, when I say serious winners, meaning that they're going to take everything um, literal uh, and and perfect it. That's what I see uh, from this generation. And um, the next generation is going to eat off of that. And they're going to be the ones that's the the alpha generation is going to be the ones that's going to turn this world around. That's my feeling. That's my thoughts. Um, I just have that, um, that theory. What they mean. That's just what my soul tells me. Just by dealing with them, spending time with them, um, understanding them, you know. Um, and it's they, it's crazy because they take to me too. They they you know they don't shy away like how most kids you know when when they dealing with older people they they you know they they won't speak about certain things, but they're comfortable with me. And I like that because then I can get information on what they're trying to do um, with our world. Because we have to live in it. They are the change and we have to live in it. But I'm okay with it. This new generation coming. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with the eating organic. I'm okay with the um, we need to own land. Um, I'm okay with we need to buy crops. I mean, uh, create crops. And um, I'm okay with all of that. Because that's the way Jesus Christ. And, 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 and well, I'm not going to say only Jesus Christ. But I'm going to just say in the Bible. Okay, this is how it was designed. And that's what they're going back to. It's like we're going backwards. Y'all still living in the New Testament. And they're taking it backwards. Okay, and I, I, could, I could see it and I could appreciate it. You know, I had one tell me um, that 
they're trying to beat anxiety. And I had to explain to them that anxiety was never a thing. Um, That's just something that um, this world has created. And I tried to give her coping skills to try and get rid of the anxiety, you know, because a lot of that generation, they have anxiety. And it's because of what we put on them from the last generation, okay? Because I think the the generation before um, the Y generation, anyway, I'm, I'm getting it twisted again. Let me make sure I get it right. Um, no, the millennials, okay? The millennials, they, the millennials and they are, they are the, Generation, I'm trying to read it real quick while I'm talking to you guys. Um, okay, 1980 to 1994. Okay, Generation Z, 1995 to. Okay, I'm talking. I'm sorry. The Y generation is the generation that's the terrible generation. Okay, which is the millennials. Um, then, then we have the Z generation. That's what they are, uh, 1995 to 2009. Okay, the Z generation is the ones that's turn is going to turn it around. They're going to be the key, and the Alpha generation is going to stand stand firm with it. Okay, they're going to stand firm with it. So I say to y'all people, y'all old people, either you get with it or get lost because they're, they're going to change this world. And I see it. I see their thoughts. I understand their thoughts. Um, they connect with me. Um, they're very smart. Uh, so those are things that y'all got to watch out for. Um, if, you're not, if you don't have no education, you need to get some because they are very smart. Um what they need from us is support, um, teach them um, things that they can do, their culture, uh, because a lot of them has been stripped of their culture. Um, and they can take it and, and let's watch and see what they do with it. You know, um, that's my understanding um, for these new generations. Um, I'm very, like I said once again, I'm, I'm I'm very pleased with the next two generations that's coming up. That's coming up. I'm very pleased with them. You know, um, we wanted a change. And we're saying, you know, we want to make America great again. And I believe that the Alphas are going to do it. So we got within the next 20 years um, to watch these Alphas come up with Generation Y. Right? No, I'm sorry. Generation Z. I keep mixing it up with Generation Z. And watch how they do things. Okay? I, I love the fact that they have teamed up. Um, they get their mates and they work together uh, as much as they can. Um, I like the fact that they are working. Um, I like the fact that they're not out buying very, very expensive stuff. Their choice of uh, like purses and stuff run they, they, their highest price purses that they purchase. Okay, don't even run over five hundred dollars. Okay, they shop very uh, cheap. Okay, they save their money. Um, they think about what they want to buy before they buy it. Um, it's, it's it's a big difference with them than uh, the generation before the millennials. Okay, the millennials were born um, nineteen eighty. To 1994, and those are the ones that um, has messed up our world. 
and we have to continue to watch them. You know, um, we, we, we really can't trust them too much, you know, um, because of the way they do things. However, like I said, this new generation, we got to pay attention to, to them. Uh, the millennials, uh, we got to watch them too because they got too much negativity going on. Their minds ain't right. Uh, but these new ones, we, we, we can learn a lot from them. Um, and like I said, the alphas is going to be the ones that's going to turn everything around. And that's just what I see, you know, dealing with them on a daily basis. So, yeah. Um... Once again, this is Jacqueline Richardson, Miss JJ Diamond, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me. And y'all got the news of Miss JJ Diamond's life and the generations today. <laughs> uh, that's all I got for y'all. I don't, I don't, I don't know what else to talk about with y'all. Um, but I'll try to get on um, as much as I can as I see things and let y'all know what's going on in the world. You know. Um, and this is just what it is, you know, in the world today. And we just got to be cautious and, and, and pay attention. And that's the thing about this generation, Z. They pay attention to everything. That's why they have the anxiety. But it's for a reason. Because the, the anxiety sets in because it's bad. That's why. It's not that... And I just wanted to throw that out there, you know. Um, that's why the, the anxiety sets in on them. Because when we was coming out, we didn't have anxiety. We knew the energy was bad and we got away from it. You know, but they're physically going through it because they wasn't taught how to cope. But I'm going to start teaching them. I'm going to give them the skill. Mommy. I'm on live. Hold on. I'm about to get off right now. Well, y'all have a good day. Make sure y'all be productive. And I'll talk to y'all soon.